Saint Asaph is the next stop for us. He lived in the second half of the sixth century, so he's one of the uh, oldest saints that we're going to be seeing on this particular journey. Um, according to the various traditions and chronologies, he dies probably around 596. Now, we don't have a lot of information about Asaph. He's uh, one of the ones that we know the least about. Ordinarily, uh, that might actually draw into question uh, the historicity, whether or not he kind of was a real person, in fact. And when there are no records, that's sort of a, a risk. Um, but there are so many different names um, of places that include his name in, them, um, in, in northern Wales that there's a strong argument that he was a real person, in fact. Now, as I said, there's not much known. There's actually no Welsh account of the life of St. Asaph. Um, his name does appear in a, um, a kind of a genealogy of Welsh saints, which is kind of a, one, of the, one of the books. But uh, most of what we do know comes from the life of another saint, a guy named St. Kentigern. Kentigern was the Bishop of Glasgow in Scotland, um, and he was in trouble. He needed to get out of town. He ended up in northern Wales, which is actually not too far away. Quick aside, um, uh, another name for Kentigern um, is St. Mungo. And uh, for those of you Harry Potter fans out there, um, he lends his name to the hospital, St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Injuries. That's Mungo. Uh, back to Asaph. Now, Kentigern, when, when he was in Wales, he gathered together a large community of disciples. Um, and the oldest of those disciples was Asaph. And tradition records that uh, once Kentigern was standing in a cold stream praying, a very sort of Celtic thing to do, um, and he asked Asaph to bring him a burning stick to warm himself. Um, but instead, Asaph brought live coals in his apron, um, and the apron uh, wasn't burned. So Kentigern uh, realized the holiness of the man within, in front of him. Now, Kentigern goes back to Scotland, and the church in Wales at that point is strong enough to need a bishop, and Asaph is elected. Um, Asaph does give his name, as I said, to a lot of different places, uh, most notably the city of St. Asaph, um, and the cathedral also called St. Asaph's, um, and his shrine was there until it was destroyed in the Reformation. Now, when I got to St. Asaph's, I got there um, on Sunday uh, morning, or early afternoon, right after the main service, and it was a little bit odd because kind of coffee hour was going on in one of the transepts. It's... Um, it's a small little city and it's a small little cathedral. Uh, they actually call themselves the littlest ancient cathedral in Britain. Um, it's a beautiful building, um, just gorgeous carved um, wood ceiling. There's a huge display on the translation of the Bible into Welsh, and there's actually a big monument out in the front too. Um, this was done in the late 1500s. Uh, mid to late 1500s, and it was a kind of a, a, an important milestone um, in the recovery of Welsh culture and language. Um, the church in Wales, I should, I should note, is actually completely and utterly separate from the Church of England. It looks pretty similar, but they actually have their own thing. Now, on the surface, none of this is actually about Asaph, but it did get me thinking about what it means to be in a specific place the fancy word in theology um, for this idea is called uh, particularity. We are particular people living in particular times in particular places. And there's something really important about that. And Asaph was a particular person. He was a local. He was raised up to serve his own people and he needed to speak their language. And not just their actual language, but, but to, uh, to speak to them in ways that they would understand, coming from similar experiences. He needed to meet them where they were uh, with their own concerns and their own needs and, and their own issues, their own particular needs and issues. Living in a place like Lenox in Western Massachusetts, I, I found this idea very, very compelling. Now, Jesus does talk about the whole, uh, the prophet is not without honor in his own whole town thing, and I think he's onto something. But at the same time, it's, it's really good to know the people and know their cares and know their concerns um, and to to be able to be in with them in their experiences and that's the only way we'll really be able to bring our experience of the love of god to them so asaph um, again came out of um, the, the local welsh community and was raised up to to serve and minister to them he served as the bishop and helped grow the church in northern wales um, and he is um, honored for that work to this day.